You may have heard Neuralink now has approval to start human trials, but did you hear Elon Musk talk about Neuralink's potential to collaborate with Tesla on the latest earnings call? Or are you interested in learning more about the coming brain interface competition from Apple and Meta? We'll cover these topics and more in this episode of Neuropod. Welcome to Neuropod, a channel covering all topics related to Elon Musk's brain machine interface company, Neuralink. In this update episode, I'll discuss Elon Musk's comments on helping amputees become cyborgs. I'll talk about Elon's comment on a monkey being able to play the video game Minecraft. I'll show videos of multiple ways the Neuralink team tests the robustness of their implants, and play a clip of presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy discussing Neuralink. And then make sure to watch to the end to hear about Neuralink facing brain interface competition from Apple and Meta. Elon Musk has confirmed what many have speculated in the past, that Tesla and Neuralink could collaborate in the future. Tesla's humanoid robot, Optimus, is being built almost entirely from scratch, so the team is going to be able to produce custom, highly advanced prosthetic devices for pairing with Neuralinks. Here's what Elon had to say on the call. Another cool thing about Optimus is that, you know, there's just in the U.S. alone, there are two million amputees. Um, and um, I was just talking to the Neuralink team, and um, by combining a Neuralink uh, implant uh, and a robotic arm or leg uh, for someone that has has had their arms, arm or leg, or all arms and legs amputated, we, we believe we can give um, basically a cyborg body that is uh, incredibly capable. Um, Six million dollar man. In, in, in real life, but don't want to cost six million dollars. <laughs> Sixty thousand dollar man. Since <laughs> that's impressive, but it's it'll actually you know. It, it, so so that, that that actually could be a really, I think would be incredible to you know potentially help millions of people around the world, um, and, uh, and 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 give them you know a, a robot armor like that is. Um, as good, maybe long-term better than a biological one. How cool is this? Solving health issues for people is the primary reason I became interested in following Neuralink in the first place. For those like myself who are too young to get the reference, I looked it up and there was an American TV show called The Six Million Dollar Man back in the 1970s. Of course, despite the fact that Elon's making a joke that the $60,000 doesn't sound as impressive, those who get actual prosthetics are going to want the price to be lower. I simply don't know of any team more capable of driving the cost of these devices lower than Tesla and Neuralink. Now there's one more other important thing to realize here. Neuralink is working on building high bandwidth brain machine interfaces. The machine part is simply just a placeholder. It's a stand in for any type of digital device. That means your Neuralink could be connected to an advanced prosthetic a Tesla car, a Tesla robot, a Tesla robot army, drones, your house alarm, someone else's Neuralink, your computer, your smartphone, or your pet dog's Neuralink. While it's true that Neuralink is going to spend the next 10 to 20 years focused on solving neurological and spinal cord problems, in the longer term, our imagination is the limit for the crazy future Neuralink could enable. I won't spend too much time on this as many of you have seen that Neuralink's monkey named Pager has been able to play the video game Pong telepathically, but Elon confirmed on this X post that Neuralink monkeys could play more advanced games like Minecraft. This may seem like it's just a quirky, fun use case for this advanced tech, but it actually demonstrates something much more profound. If a human had Neuralinks placed in their motor cortex, and wanted to play video games or use their computer telepathically, that would be a game changer for paralyzed people. And this is the first indication Neuralink is going to address in their FDA clinical trials, which will likely begin sometime later this year. Neuralink currently does not have clinical trials available for enrollment. However, if you're in the United States and 18 years old, you can apply to join their patient registry on their website at www.neuralink.com patient dash registry.
Watch this Neuralink engineer drop a metal cylinder on a Neuralink implant. This is pretty aggressive testing, given that it's unlikely someone would have something directly hit their head where the Neuralink is implanted. But as you might expect, it's typical and necessary practice to test for the most extreme scenarios. Fortunately, this implant looks like it performed quite well, as I can't see any damage. Another example of some fun testing was from a post that shows a series of Neuralink implants being submerged and sloshed around. This engineer, Aram, who happens to work at both Neuralink and X, says the fluid is 58 degrees Celsius, or 136 degrees Fahrenheit, and is pumped 24-7. By accelerating the life cycle testing of these implants, the engineers can get a better idea of how the implants will perform in the brain over time. I've asked James Delma to help break down some of these Tech Tuesday posts and help us gain better understanding. I'll be posting that later. Also, while we're on X, Neuralink has now posted their job openings on the platform. Apply to join the team there. Presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy recently spoke with Elon Musk and others on the X platform. Mr. Kennedy discussed some of his thoughts on political issues, but also took the time to hear from Elon about AI and Neuralink. Listen to these two one-minute clips. See what you're doing with Neuralink. And it seems to me that that is a technology that could potentially be really horrifically de uh, uh, denigrating to, to democracy and human freedoms if it's taking the wrong direction. So what are your thoughts about that? Elon has been clear on his stance on AI for many years. He's wary of what the future could become if we aren't cautious about AI safety. He also advocates for regulatory oversight of AI. But at the same time, he thinks it's likely that things will turn out well. Given that many of us have heard this before, my primary takeaway from hearing Mr. Kennedy's question was less about the substance of the question and more about the fact that if he knows about Neuralink, the company is starting to reach a large percentage of the public. Neuralink is still a small company with around three to 400 employees. But oddly enough, if our presidential candidates, who are often in their 70s and 80s, are aware of this new tech, then the company is no longer a secret per se. More and more people are becoming aware of what Elon and the team are doing. For a long time, it felt like Neuralink was just a side project that didn't have real momentum. But during the next decade, we're not only going to see how people's lives are transformed for the better, but also we're going to hear more discussion about how brain-machine interfaces are going to be the successor to the cell phone. A couple months ago, Apple unveiled their latest product, the Apple Vision Pro. This is a super tech-filled augmented reality and virtual reality headset that has tons of cameras and sensors. It starts at $3,500 and it allows you to do the typical things you'd expect from these headsets nowadays. You can have video calls with your coworkers or friends, you can watch movies, play more immersive video games, and unlike most other headsets, you can take a 3D recording of the environment you're in. Does this remind you of Snap's Spectacles, Meta's Ray-Ban Stories, or Google Glass? These tech giants have played around with these headsets and also voice interface devices like Amazon's Alexa and Google's Nest, but in order for there to be mass adoption, I suspect it's going to take something completely new. Oddly enough, these wearable headsets just don't seem like they're going to be as widely adopted as surgically implanted Neuralink brain chips. I'll be honest, of all, of all the things you do and all the companies you run, I think it's all awesome. The one thing that does concern me, and I know concerns a lot of people out there, so I do have to bring it up, which is Neuralink. Sure. So firstly, can you explain what Neuralink is and what the goal of it is? Uh, we put a, a chip in your brain to control your mind. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Concerns not alleviated. Yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> jump right in. <laughs> Step right up. Who wants one? Sure. This is a controversial take. But before you throw a fit, take a look at Meta's Oculus Quest device. This thing currently sells for $300, less than one-tenth the cost of Apple's Vision Pro. It has lots of tech and some pretty great functionality but I've only used it once since getting it nearly three years ago. And Apple's Vision Pro is filled with much more tech, but 
how long can you wear something moderately heavy on your head, plus have two screens directly in front of your eyes? As you'd expect, Elon agrees. He liked this post and responded by tagging Neuralink. Avi's post says, AR, VR won't work till we directly hijack the optic nerve. People just don't want to wear headsets. There is a fight amongst the tech giants right now. They're vying for the top spot in this AR, VR space, and it's still unclear to me who amongst them is going to emerge as the leader. However, one thing that is clear to me is that these devices are all temporary. By temporary, I mean which of these devices are people going to use when the person right next to them has an advanced Neuralink that can do 10,000 times more. Apple says their Vision Pro is a revolutionary spatial computer that seamlessly blends digital content with the physical world, while allowing users to stay present and connected to others. Vision Pro creates an infinite canvas for apps that scales beyond the boundaries of a traditional display and introduces a fully three-dimensional user interface controlled by the most natural and intuitive inputs possible, a user's eyes, hands, and voice. These inputs of a user's eyes, hands, and voice are much too slow. People are going to need to be able to simply think what they want and have it happen immediately. So this begs the question, what if the tech giants throw in the towel, so to speak, and they say, yeah, let's start building these implanted brain machine interface devices. Well, at that point, which would you trust? Would you want a Neuralink implanted device? An Apple device? How about a device from Mark Zuckerberg's company? Or a brain chip from a company out of China? Okay, jokes or anti-jokes aside, Mark Zuckerberg has talked about brain interfaces long ago. Facebook Reality Labs was established in 2017 with a project focusing on brain-computer interface. Here's a clip of then Facebook's VP of Engineering, Regina Dugan. She was former director of DARPA. So let me give you an example of what I mean. Let's start with your brain. Your brain has 86 billion neurons that fire a thousand times per second. Now, they don't all fire at the same time, so let's decrease that by a factor of 100. Speech is essentially a compression algorithm and a lossy one at that. That's why we love great writers and poets, because they're just a little bit better at compressing the fullness of a thought into words. So what if you could type directly from your brain? Thus far, they've been focused on non-invasive devices. But who knows? Maybe if Neuralink demonstrates some success, we'll hear of an announcement of an implant from Meta. If you want more Neuralink content, check out my conversation here with James Dauma on how Neuralink works. My name is Ryan Tanaka. Please follow and repost. Hope to catch you next time. Oh,